In this video, I'd like to take you on a tour of the boilerplate. The boilerplate is what I've used to develop the templates for your in-class exercises and your mini projects. You're not going to use the boilerplate directly except in your final project, but the boilerplate is set up in such a way that um, certain things are done always in the same sort of place, right? And for your in-class exercises and for your mini projects, it will be very helpful for you to have a good idea of where the things that you need to do are. If you can figure out where in this um, program all of these things are, it'll be make your programming experience a lot easier. You, everything will go a lot faster. You'll know where to find things. You'll know what the errors mean and so forth and so on much more easily. It'll help you debug. It'll help you with a lot of things. The boilerplate mainly um, sets up Pygame and gives you some structure on where you should put things. Um, it also enforces the MVC, um, the Mover View Controller um, system. But um, other than that, it doesn't do very much. It, it enforces some, some discipline on you, and it initializes Pygame. Uh, there are some other things that I've done that help you in other ways. So let's go and look at it. So to get there, first I have to go and I have to run Python. So I click on Python XY, um, and that gives me different things here. Um, I could use the Spider IDE. I could use a console. In general, what we've what we're going to do is we're going to use a um, editor. I usually use SciTE. You can use Idle. If you're going to use a Mac, you're going to use Idle all the time. I just prefer SciTE, so I'm going to use it. Click the little green box, and I get this thing. Um, to open up the boilerplate, um, I could either use the open. You're all familiar with that, uh, how to open files. Or if I've opened it recently, which I have, I can just look at the recent files and open that up. And that gets me the boilerplate. The boilerplate's nice. Like I said, it gives you everything you need to start, right? In fact, if I press go, uh, which is uh, I can either access from the tool tools um, menu or I can press F5, I just get this empty black box. That's fine. That's all we need. We have an empty black box that works. Now we can modify it and add all the other stuff into it. Just getting here, um, I don't want to be a challenge for you. The boilerplate lets you get here with no problems. And whenever you want to exit, you can just press the little X, and it goes away. And, and that's um, something that we actually had to program that's part of the boilerplate. So now the boilerplate starts with a project title. These are going to be mostly in template form. So except for on your final project, that's already going to be filled in. Then it also asks for the author. It's going to be your name. I'm your professor. I need your name. I need your name actually in two places. One is here, so that while I'm grading it, I know um, who's actually done it. Just because you emailed it to me doesn't mean by the time it gets to my interpreter, I know who's who. Okay, So you have to tell me explicitly there. And it would be really nice if you um, told me here, right? Because if because each of these templates is going to be named something like bouncing ball underscore template, right? Well, for some reason, the students never take the template off, so I end up with 12 different um, programs, all named bouncing ball underscore template. It would be really nice if what you could do is you could change that template so it would say bouncing ball underscore your name, bouncing ball underscore ranchler, bouncing ball underscore smith, whatever. And you do that just by clicking file and save as, right? And, and um, you know all about that. You'll have to make, make sure that you use the extension .py at the end, otherwise it won't run. I'll figure that out, but uh, it, might, it might screw you up once or twice. Okay, so let's actually go through the boilerplate and what we have available. The first thing that, that I have here are the packages. Now, packages are sets of constants and functions and classes that other people have already made for you. So you can just import these, and you don't have to do anything about it. You can use them right away. Um, the three things that this comes with are um, Pygame. And we need Pygame because that's, what we're, that's the package that we're using for drawing things to the screen and for event handling. Um, Sys, 
we use that for activating that little red X. So we needed to import something from another package just to activate that little red X. It's important to be able to do that. We already have that there. And game class. Uh, when you get this, it'll probably just be game class, not game class version 0, um, 0.95. 0 0.95. Um, game class isn't completely done at the moment. Um, so game class includes a bunch of stuff to help you out. Uh, like a, some function to print to the screen easily. Pygame can do that by itself. It's a, I think it's a three-step process, maybe four. Um, I'd rather not have you worry about that. I'd rather have you have a simple um, screen print function. Also has like the background. It has some, and the background is very important to how we're going to program things. And it has the um, color constants, so that you don't have to use three numbers to specify a color, you can just use a name. It would be very simple that way. Uh, this is also where you import, say, math, the math package, so you can do square roots and cosines and sines. This is where you import the random package, so you can randomize things, because lots of games benefit from randomization. So it's a place that you'll use occasionally, but you're not going to spend a lot of time there, because it's usually just import Pygame. Bang, you're done. You're, that's all you need to do. Uh, then we'll talk about classes. So classes are the next thing. Um, classes are the basis of object-oriented programming. They are templates for objects. So uh, this is an object-oriented programming course. We're programming games in Python. It's object-oriented programming language. Games usually involve things moving around and changing position and things like that. Classes are good for that. Um, an example of a class might be a person. You might have different people wandering around in the background, right? And you might want to have them have different colors. So uh, let's say you want um, to have a class of a person that has several attributes. Those attributes could be shirt, slacks, shoes, right? Something like that. And then you could have some methods that would change those. Right, so you'd have method um, change pants, so you could change from blue pants to black pants, or you could have method change shirt, you can change shirt from white to green or whatever, and you could also have a get method, right? Um, so you could you could find out what kind of what kind of um, shirt somebody's wearing, right? Later on, I'll talk about. Uh, making the objects, but each object is going to have all of the same attributes and all of the same um, methods, but the attributes will have different values, all right? And you, if you change the attributes of one object of a class, it's, you're, only, you're not going to change the attributes of the other objects of the class. That's what makes the class a class and the object a particular instance of that class, okay, in the program. Functions, um, then we have functions. Functions are uh, fairly simple. You send it a lot of inputs, in this case a field, a background, a color. We'll talk about this particular draw field later on. And then it modifies something. Um, so it'll modify the field, it'll mod modify the background. This one in particular modifies the background. Um, or it returns a value. So the simplest example of a function would be a mathematical function. So you'd have a function f that takes a value x and it'll return the square of x plus 2, right? So you send f of 2 and it's going to say, the computer's going to say, all right, x squared is 4 plus 2 is 6. I'll return 6 and then the guy can use that 6 wherever he wants to in the program later on. Uh, that's what functions do. We'll talk a lot more about functions later on, but this is where you put the functions, right? Uh, and these can modify classes, and they can, or they can just do something with values. Now we do have some special functions, the MVC functions. So I've already said we are using this model view controller philosophy, um, and this means that we're going to try to keep the um, model, which is the information. Uh, the viewer, um, which um, sends stuff to the screen, and the um, control, 
where we actually tell the avatar what to do, uh, we start the game, whatever. We want to keep those as separate as possible. Okay, so we're only going to send as much information to each one of those as they need to do their job, and then everything else it doesn't do. Um, the engine, the engine um, here takes some interval of time, uh, the time between frames, and it modifies the avatar and what other whatever other objects there are in the game, um, in as they would change during that interval of time. Uh, the field here is the physical field, the simulated field. All right. Uh, the viewer is next. That just draws stuff to the screen. All right. And um, that takes the screen and the background and the avatar and so forth and so on, and it draws things to the screen. Uh, the background will first draw on the back, um, then you draw all the objects, and then the thing will be displayed. When you draw the background, it overwrites everything that's already there. All right. Um, and so you have to draw anything that you want anybody to see between these two comments. All right. And then Pygame will just update the display and will show it. Okay. And that's the, that's the, that is the um, order that has to happen. And that's why we created this view function in the first place, so that you can't screw up. Right. Um, because that's something that's been a common pro problem when we don't do this. The background also keeps the scale and the offset inside of it because the avatar doesn't know anything. The objects don't know anything about the size of the screen. They only know about their size and their positions in real space for that field. They don't know anything about it in terms of the pixels on the screen. Uh, then we have control. Control will take a bunch of events like a mouse click or a key press and turn it into some change in the avatar. You press up, the avatar jumps up, so you increase his um, vertical velocity, right? And they also can do that with buttons if you're using buttons to control the avatar. The control function is just for the avatar. Um, anything about controlling the game state, otherwise, you're going to want to use, um, you're going to want to do that in main. Um, main is where all the action is as far as the program is concerned. It does everything that you need to do. Um, and first what it does is it initializes the screen and the clock. It creates that background, it creates that field, creates the clock, it creates the screen. Um, that you won't have to do much with. Uh, then we're going to initialize game objects and loop variables. This is where you say Alice equals person with a blue shirt. This equals uh, Bob equals person with a green shirt. Uh, th that's this is where you create those those things. You also create loop variables like this is where you say, okay, I'm going to keep score. Score is equal to zero, or bet high score is equal to zero, and so forth and so on. And those will get, get modified in the main loop. That's when we come to the main loop. This is where most of the things happen in the game, and it'll keep on going while true. Well, while true goes forever. That means it will keep on going until you get down to here and somebody. Um, right here, somebody presses that little red box and closes it. That's what that does. Uh, the first thing you get to in the main loop is this interval. Uh, this is calculating the time it takes to go through one um, the loop once. Um, so it, this 30 says that it's the clock is trying to go through and do this um, at 30 frames per second. Sometimes it can't keep up. This interval actually measures that exact time. Usually it's around 34 milliseconds per frame. Uh, then we go through and we, um, we've got the engine, right? And we send things to the engine and we get a result back. If it hits something or something, then you can use that result to update the score. So this is the engine is for the physics part of the model. Uh, the rest of the model should go in here, so the updating of the score and so forth. Then you send everything to the viewer. Um, you only have to do that once. There's nothing else you have to do. And then you have events. Um, we'll talk a lot more about the events loop here, but um, this is where we send things to control, and this is when we do things like um, have the quit, or we can resize the, um, resize the uh, window. And that's all there is there. At the end here, we have the we initialize initialize pi game and we run main, and that's how how everything starts. First, we have to initialize pi game, get pi game ready, and then we run main and we're um, and we've started our game. So that is our boilerplate, and that's where everything is. And I hope that's going to help you later on in this.